Returning to the marshes and swamps surrounding the idyllic city of Leowen feels like a portal to a completely different time period of the Elder Scrolls lore. The last time we saw this part of Tamriel was back in 2006, where it occupied the southeastern corner of Cyrodiil in Oblivion. For reference, that was several years before we even knew there was going to be a Fallout 3, so it's safe to say that it's been a little while. The Elder Scrolls Online Blackwood knows exactly which heartstrings it's pulling here, as its roughly 20 hours of content is littered with gags and unmissable references to Oblivion that generally end up feeling more endearing rather than stale. The setting may be different, but Blackwood is still very much the same Elder Scrolls Online that fans have grown used to. This expansion barely breaks away, at all in fact, from the formulaic zone design that it's established over the last several years since its Morrowind chapter in 2017. We get the same exact number of quests, locations, sky shards, world bosses, and a new trial, which is the bog standard configuration of new things that we get in every single new expansion each year. Zenimax Online is nothing if not consistent, but at least it's safe to say that the writing is filled with more zingers in comparison to last year's comparatively dry Greymoor expansion, the geography of Blackwood itself is more varied and interesting, and the addition of companions that level up alongside you and follow you on your journey make its inherent repetition ever so slightly more interesting. To be precise, there are seven main quests, six delves, nine points of interest with quests attached to them, two public dungeons, six world bosses, 18 sky shards to find, and a brand new trial, basically ESO's equivalent of a raid. If you're not in a guild, it's still tough to find anyone to group up and play through that one with, even a week after launch on PC. But as always, group content isn't Blackwood's main focus by a long shot, and the single-player main quest story actually carries some pretty great writing this year. The tale touches on some fascinating parts of Elder Scrolls lore, while explaining how the Daedric Prince Mehrunes Dagon ultimately rose to power in Oblivion. You get to go back to the fiery Deadlands and rub elbows with its inhabitants, the terminally non-playable Dremora, and you even get to learn more about the mysterious powers associated with that realm, both mystical and political. Blackwood still ends up being pretty cheesy in its delivery. Character animations still evoke the uncanny valley to its highest extreme. One main character who we're meant to sympathize with constantly looks like he's just had a fresh Botox injection. That's not new, of course, that's just how Nord characters look in ESO, but this rehashing of low-quality animations and character models in every new expansion contributes greatly to the feeling that ESO isn't keeping up with the times as much as other MMOs have. The side quests are hit or miss. Several stand out for interesting tidbits of lore they cast over parts of Tamriel's constantly unraveling saga, but most of them are played for humor this year. That actually works in ESO's favor, given that, again, the acting is usually bad, and it's an online game, so you frequently have other players running around and getting in the way of your story. The big gameplay feature added this year is your new companion system. These two recruitable characters can be summoned at any time when you're playing alone, and you can take them anywhere you go. Each one has their own unique skills and playstyle. Bastion Halix is a mage by trade, but you can make him into a healer or a tank if you prefer. Miri Elendis is an assassin who can move through the shadows and suck the life force out of enemies. As you do things in the world, they have their own commentary and can even lose or gain rapport based on your actions. When you lose too much, they might even become unavailable to you for a time. This is interesting in theory, but the limitations are pretty arbitrary. For example, picking up bugs always seems to upset Miri, but she has absolutely no problem with you stomping frogs. While characters look old and clunky, the world itself is a treat. Blackwood and its surrounding areas are gorgeous and pleasantly diverse, and Leowen may very well be the most visually interesting city that we've seen added to ESO since Somerset launched in 2018. 
The fiery red deadlands contrast against the verdant green swamplands which surround the northwestern portion of the map, and both of those contrast against the sunken, blood-soaked marshes that cover its eastern half. There's a lot to see here, and the deliberate detail that went into handcrafting each part of the new zone is noticeable. The Elder Scrolls Online Blackwood delivers more of the same, albeit this new helping is a step up from last year's Greymore expansion in its often funny writing and striking map. Blackwood leans hard on its nostalgia, but it actually manages to feel like an appropriate prequel to Oblivion without forcing you down too many of the same paths. Its companion system is definitely worth checking out too, but it may not be enough gameplay variety to recommit a fan who is tired of ESO in general. For those of us who are still happily jogging along on the treadmill though, there's plenty to see and do here if for no other reason than to simply fortify your understanding of Elder Scrolls lore. For more, check out our reviews of Biomutant and Assassin's Creed Valhalla Wrath of the Druids, and for everything else, stick with IGN.